Do you guys remember Ryan Reynolds? Well, this is him now. Wait, that's not right. Okay, here we go. Fuck! Obviously, I was surprised when I saw Reynolds was going to be leading Netflix's most expensive film to date. But then I remembered all the expensive films he's been in lately, and I just shut the fuck up. If you look into the cast a little bit, you'll notice that we actually have quite the powerhouse. We have Dwayne Ding Dong, his Stone Cold, I Johnson and Gal Gadot, as well as a less famous Ritu Arya. Red Notice is strong actors and millions of Netflix's dollars, so you'd probably think that it'd be top tier film gold. So was it? I mean, not really. To be honest, the plot is kind of thin, but I don't necessarily think that Netflix was trying to reinvent the film industry when they made this movie. I'd say that I'm very confused though, because throughout the years I've noticed that there is a huge disconnect between critics and the audience. Red Notice may not be the next best film, but it is very fun and entertaining and the audience does seem to agree with a 92% score. All the while, Rotten Tomatoes' tomato meter has it at a 37%. But if we take a step back, we are able to see that Star Wars The Last Jedi, which was a pretty bad movie, let's be honest, has the opposite issue with an audience score of 42% and a tomato meter of 91%. Look, we can go into the specifics about the corruption at Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, I'm not completely oblivious to it, but that's going a little bit too far from the movie, so let's just stick with the movie. Before we start, I know what you're all thinking, so I'll answer the question that's on everyone's mind. Yes, The Rock has once again decided to make an appearance at the jungle, which does make this not his first, or his second, or even third or fourth for that matter, but his fifth movie in the jungle. I don't know why this is a thing, but you know, here we go, here we have it. Red Notice follows Nolan Booth, a thief who is being persecuted by FBI agent John Hartley and Interpol agent Urvashi Das as he embarks on a journey to steal the two Cleopatra eggs that have been located and to find the third missing one. After stealing the first egg, Hartley and Das catch Booth and retrieve the egg. It's at this point that Booth's rival, a thief known as the Bishop, steals the egg essentially right from under Hartley and Das's noses and lays a trap to make Dawes believe that Hartley had lied to her. Hartley is promptly arrested by Dawes and sent to a Russian jail where he discovers that his cellmate is none other than Booth. The two eventually team up and escape from prison when their goals align. Booth wants to retrieve all the three eggs so that he can finally defeat the bishop, while Hartley wants to use the eggs to prove his innocence. Throughout the movie, Reynolds and The Rock's characters develop a friendship which is very similar to what The Rock usually has with Kevin Hart. Reynolds plays his typical wisecrack character while The Rock plays his typical stoic character. It works pretty much as great as you'd probably imagine it would. I do want to mention that there is this one point in the movie where Gal and The Rock were fighting and there was just so much sexual tension that I had to stop myself and ask, wait a minute, are these two lovers? It really made me second guess how I felt about these two for a second. Even though the story eventually does clear it up. Well, at least I hope that's the case anyways. Also, by the way, this is kind of off topic, but I've always known Gal Gadot was a very good looking woman, but it wasn't really until this movie that I understood that she just radiates so much sexual energy. Like I said, it doesn't really affect the movie, but I noticed it and I wanted to point it out. I also want to mention that while I enjoyed the movie, I am kind of saddened by the fact that Reynolds seems to have been typecasted. I am of the belief that Reynolds is able to do well in roles other than his typical type. So it's kind of sad to see movies like Buried or The Voices being few and far between. Although Road Notice does have a very bland story, I do think it's enjoyable. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a yay. It's a movie where you can have a good time as long as you turn off your brain and don't go into it expecting the best movie you've ever seen. There's lots of action, jokes, and you can even bring the whole family to watch it. You can catch Red Notice on Netflix if you have the subscription. That being said, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want to hear me say more? Let me know down in the description and don't forget to subscribe. This has been your boy Subtly Artistic. Peace out.